Of course, continuity matters. And that's exactly why the four horsemen of Stillwater are coming into town soon. You are locked on Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. We are available on every single podcasting platform as well as visually on YouTube. You know the drill. Find me on Twitter at Aldeo State. We got to throw some fan duel into the mix, but before we do, we often talk, a lot of people, in regards to recruiting, kind of what are the things that matter? And what are the things that guys are looking for when they're exploring the university side of things? And, of course, not every kid's the same, right? Not every set of standards is going to be the same, applicable all across the board, 24-7, all the time. The way that the recruiting seen used to be is considerably different you could say social media obviously is a big part of that but you could say obviously athletically as well people are faster stronger typically better overall right now in high school coming into college it's just a fact of life it is what it is and in order to take advantage of that some places have to be able to offer something significant no matter what it is And we always talk about how Stillwater, Oklahoma is a little bit different, right? When you're talking about what Oklahoma State provides and offers and how getting guys to Stillwater, it takes some work. One of the things that we have that not a lot of places have is continuity. As we just heard, right before we got to celebrate the wonderful day that it was the 4th of July celebration, and knowing that Jonathan Agumidu is now a cowboy, the four horsemen, as I like to call them, the linebackers that are coming in to help this Brian Nardo defense and more, get prepared for what is to be a crazy 2024 recruiting class. But again, continuity matters. We heard it from Gunnar Wilson himself, right? You've heard it multiple times. We know that cowboy culture is a real thing. We know it needed a little bit of a shot in the arm, but everything does. Everything needs a little bit of adaptation. And we got that, and you're clearly seeing it right now. Again, continuity. Well, of course, Coach Brian Nardo is brand new. But who else? That's really virtually it. That's the whole point. Coming into this year, you've got Coach Tim Duffy. 11 years now in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And he's been with the quarterbacks forever and a day. And now he also gets to be able to be involved coordinating the defensive passing game. And it's a deserved move. Joe Bob Clements is in his 11th season as well. Dan Hammerschmidt is in his ninth. And obviously, the big man down low, Greg Richmond, is in the seventh season, but he's just newly minted the defensive coordinator's D-line guy. And Brian Nardo is the guy who's brand new. But these guys provide that, that window that all of these parents are typically looking for. They do not want their kids to be in a position where they're going to be bounced around over and over and over. Now, sometimes kids clearly do that to themselves because they have – You know, they have reasons. It happens. But a lot of times, I would assume that parents are probably more reminiscent of the old model of kind of sticking with it for a little bit longer. It doesn't have to be as old school and crazy as it used to be. It doesn't have to be that. But just a realization that if you're not growing, you're dying, right? And part of growth is that continuity, is to know that your kids are in a good position, to to know that you're sending your your kids off to somewhere that's 
You're going to help them be more squared away. Again, this continuity definitely matters. And then you add Brian Nardo, which is, again, the shot in the arm, that you take all of this longevity, all of this continuity, all of this ability to correlate it to the guys on the field, the cohesiveness even. And then you add somebody like a coach Brian Nardo that, again, is that the instantaneous shot in the arm. You hear it in these kids. There's a reason we've got these four linebackers now coming to Stillwater, Oklahoma. Jonathan Agumidu is a big-time get. That's why we've talked about it so often. We've talked about, obviously, how big of a deal Gunnar Wilson is. I see him again in the Malcolm Rodriguez style of, of, of role with, with the size already to boot. Tamaric Johnson was obviously perfect, absolutely perfect for what he's coming here to do. And then Jalen Bordley is so quick, so athletic, so cerebrally based in understanding what he's trying to do. He makes up for the fact that he's the same size as some of the safeties we have, which is not a bad thing because we know what body by glass can do. So that's the route that Jalen Bordley is going to go and he's going to get all swolled up. Rob Glass can do that. We can put him in this defense. He can be spectacular. So it really doesn't matter if he's undersized right now or not. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be about the talent around him. We know we're loaded for bear, loaded for war at safety, right? We understand that completely. But it doesn't always mean we're loaded all the way across the board, right? I think I think you could potentially say that there's some questions about other places on the defensive side of the ball. So before we get into fall, and we talk a little bit more about some post-spring t- style of stuff, um, I do want to get into the fact that all of this stuff is probably better than we remember. So we should touch back on it. But before we do, we got to talk about FanDuel real quick. Guys, as you already know, I'm all on the road all the time, about to be traveling again for baseball. I love it. Sign me up uh, every minute of it. And the beauty of baseball is you can bet on a lot of things. And FanDuel is the number one partner for you and for almost everybody else for really good reasons. You're going to get up to $200 back right now. So if you just bet 20 bucks, you're getting 10 times your dollar bills. Win or lose, and is 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 that one of those um, win-win type of propositions? And you can bet on money lines, over/under, who you think is going to get home runs, and you get paid instantly. Right? There's it's safe, secure, super easy, easy to use. There's no funny business going around. There's no better place to bet. So right now, go to Fanduel.com/lockedon to get that up to two hundred dollars back in bonus bets. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on because there's no better place to try to get your money game up. Make sure you hammer the over in Oklahoma State because the disrespect has already been talked about, but it's still still there. So we're going to get to that as well in a minute. But all right, guys. So realistically speaking, whenever I personally think of the defense, I think the one position that probably doesn't get talked about enough is going to be the cornerbacks. I think we're all getting lost. Well, I guess a lot of us are getting lost in the talent we know that we have right now at safety. The talent we we think we have at linebacker. Depth might be a little bit of a concern at some point in time. So hopefully, you know, we we avoid some things there. But corner, we've already talked about the guy we, we, we know is the leader right there, which is Corey Black. I think everybody expected him to have a big season last year because of what he was able to do in the Fiesta Bowl. But as we've kind of covered, he got away with some ticky-tacky stuff this last season, as well as the season prior. But athletically, there's not a question. Size and physicality, he's got all that figured out. Now, the understanding of defensive schematics is, is no longer an issue. So he should be able to play fast. And that's exactly what this new 335 from Brian Nardo is designed to do. Help him play fast. That's the objective here. That's the idea. Cam Smith has proven to be not only an asset, but a hot commodity. And you get, again, you're looking at the size that we're able to move across the board. This is These are chess pieces that we're now able to move in the secondary at Oklahoma State. So Brian Nardo has all of these tools in his, his tool belt right now. 
he should be able to capitalize. And at 6'2", almost, I bet he would, he's going to end up 200 pounds at some point in time, Cam Smith, as a legitimate, certified, bona fide cornerback. You're going to see it. The skill is off the, the charts. And then the next guy I think we have to bring up, you guys know how high I am on him, is Cameron Epps. I love the, the offensive background, quarterback background, the way he was able to roam defensively in high school, six foot three, going to be 210 pounds all day, every day, at a Chaminade in St. Louis, Missouri. It's good to see what he's able to provide. Now, from a spring perspective, we always have guys that stand out. Yeah, happens all the time, every year, all across the country. And at cornerback, the guy who stood out this season was definitely DJ McKinney. DJ McKinney had the craziness, dare I say, Megatron from cornerback position style of, of reception coming into the backfield this this offseason. When you make that kind of play, that's a da 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 type of situation. Cannot wait to see what he's able to do on the field as a restaurant freshman. He's got the skill, got the tenacity, and athleticism clearly not an issue. The track and field capabilities is also pretty off the charts as well. Again, another guy with all the size, six foot, 175 pounds, but he plays a lot bigger than that. Remind you a little bit of a Trey Rucker from the safety position as far as the mental makeup, the mentality of what he's trying to rock and roll with. I think a lot of people expect to see Deshaun Buckner this year. Deshaun Buckner has been right on the verge of a breakout, I, I, I feel like, but he's another one of those guys because he's already six foot, over 205 pounds. He plays with authority, he plays with an emphasis. So he's somebody like in Cameron Abs. They can play uh, multiple positions. People, I think, recall Jabbar Muhammad being able to switch from free safety to cornerback pretty much simultaneously last season. You know we're going to have that at the Cam Apps, which is why I'm so excited to see what he's able to provide because I think it's going to be like absolutely amazing. Kenneth Harris, the transfer from Arkansas State, we talked about how his film in the past was athletically off the charts. You expect somebody to be – Dominant, realistically speaking. Now, Arkansas State is pretty daggone good. I'm not trying to throw shade. But if you're coming to Oklahoma State University and you know you're trying to reset the course, reset the action that Oklahoma State typically has been over, over the years, you're going to come in and want to contribute. So you're not going to come in here thinking that you're going to have a rough go of it. You're coming here competitively because you know you can compete. That is the case. Another person that he's already here getting a little bit more of the body by glass, but he came in six foot over 190, 193 top pounds already to Kelvin Beeman. We all expect a lot out of him. Another dude, six foot over 205 pounds. Jordan Reagan right there from Oklahoma, a local guy, Oak Mogi from Bixby High School, six foot one, 185 pounds. These are all guys that we know we have in the chamber that will all be able to not only compete, but they'll be playing. And again, the versatility that we have from safety to corner to linebacker, it's so fluid, right? The way that we can move these guys around, it's the chess game. It's the chess game that we maybe have been missing for a while. Gundy does have a track record of coming back from seasons that he knows didn't go right. And as we've discussed before, it doesn't matter if it's whether your boss kind of forces your hand a bit and says, hey, bud, yeah, you know, you're, you're absolutely spectacular. This is fantastic what you've been able to do, what you've been able to provide. But we've got to be able to all step our game up together. That's fair. And as the, the ceiling continues to go, Gundy does respond typically from an off season. And that's what I think, other than 2005, where else can you look back and say otherwise? This idea that Gundy's magically, for all the faults that he may have, and you all know occasionally I don't mind pointing out things that, that go back a, a long period of time, but his success is undeniable. The level he's brought us is absolutely undeniable. And to say, like love, hate, indifference, doesn't matter, to say he hasn't responded from off type of seasons is ludicrous. I mean, people always talk about how Clint Shelf was a little bit underrated in his career at Oklahoma State University. Somebody like a corn dog, Taylor Cornelius, 
a little bit underrated in his career at Oklahoma State University, even to some degree, I would say J.W. Walsh. I'd say J.W. lived up to a lot of expectations. But you don't always see the, just the Mason Rudolphs and just the Brandon Whedons. There's guys that come out of Oklahoma State that get sprinkled around that are able to be productive afterwards. And we keep talking about, not we, not us, not, we don't have a mouse in our pocket, and I know y'all, but there's people obviously out there that are still talking about the Oklahoma State offense, the Oklahoma State offense, what it's going to do. It can be explosive. I, it's got to be smoke and mirrors. These other people that keep saying this Oklahoma State offense is, is going to struggle, this and that and the other, they're not – none of them's talking about the offense that we're going to be running. So this seems to be potentially the best-kept secret. Or again – I'm drinking way too much orange Kool-Aid and I'm living too high on the hog. Obviously, we're all going to find out. It is what it is. I can't wait for it. So that means you shouldn't be able to wait for it as, as well. It's time to put our money up, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I stress, you know, going to the fanduel.com slash locked on and getting yourself loaded up for this season because – Every time we seem to turn around, the disrespect is there. We talked earlier about how th there's a lot of publications and places and people and prognostications that had us finishing 9th, 10th, 11th in the Big 12. That is laughable. Okay? It's laughable. It is what it is. And if you saw recently, and, and this is just kind of what I'm talking about, there, we're not getting any love. We're not getting any top 25 type mentions. No hype. Now, we do have some pretty cool stuff that we, we get to talk about tomorrow as far as the All Big 12 team is concerned. But even that, you know, I think we're a little, a little light in the, in the britches in that department. We could have. In my opinion, and other people's out there, Oklahoma State, six, possibly, dare I say, more. All Big 12ers at the end of the season. Heck, I, I can you could even jump out on a limb there and say five just in the first second teams. The talent is going to be indicative of the play calling of the scheme, of the play designs, of the packages and the personnels that are put on the field. We're not going to be trying to put a square peg in a round hole. It's not going to be happening, which is, again, precisely what we did last season. Unfortunately, trying to run the zone blocking scheme with big Dominic Richardson wasn't, wasn't working, wasn't happening, wasn't going to happen. Love Dom. We all love Dom. We all hope he does phenomenal at, at Baylor, even though he's going to be behind another really good running back. Don't stress. Elijah Collins, we're good. Ollie Gordon, we're good. Jay Nixon, we're good. I even like, you know, a, a little bit more on the depth chart, which we'll get to later on. But the disrespect, it's crazy. And you saw on Twitter, this fella, uh, looked him up a little bit, Colin Wilson, sports media type of guy, right? He put out, uh, and I don't know where he came up with this calculation, mathematically, statistically, in his head. I don't get it. But he put out, like, the most, um, oh, dag on it. Let me get out to the old, the old Twitter sphere here. Um, yeah, he, he put, <laughs> put on the teams that were having the worst odds, like, as far as the, uh, the odds to lose. And he had Oklahoma State as odds to lose 10 games. Now, again, I have no idea mathematically, statistically, algorithmically, algorithmically where he came up with this number and this idea that Oklahoma State University is going to be underdogs in 10 games. This is not the first time that we've heard this, this idea that South Alabama – is going to beat Oklahoma State. Now, I get it. They've got a lot of transfers. They've got a lot of talent. They are going to be legitimate. I'm not saying that. They will be a legitimate football game. But this, come on now, this beating us stuff, it's, 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 it's wild. It's wild. It is what it is. 
And then, you know, whenever you get there and you're kind of looking into more research, you go back to like CBS. Earlier on this season, Dennis Dodd put out his post-spring top 25. And then when you just look over it, there's, there's, there's some things that do matter. People say that there's no such thing as bulletin board. Not you guys, but some people do say there's no such thing as bulletin board material. And that's not true. Everybody understands the landscape, especially when you're having a big game, especially if it's a rival. So they understand where they sit. And, and let's be real. When people say the preseason rankings and the very first you know, couple of weeks rankings don't matter at all, I would beg to differ because – Typically, the cream is going to rise to the top. Yes, very, very true. But it's a much quicker ride if you start the season already in the top 25. Goodness forbid if you stop start the season in the top 10. If you start the season in the top 10, and let's just say you have the cupcake of all cupcake schedules until you get to like the meat and taters of your conference play. So you should be 6-0 to start the season. You very well could be 7-0 to start the season, that type of thing. If you're in that category, you're probably going to keep moving up if you win. So inevitably, you got a really, really small way to go to go from number 10 in the country to in week one to number two in the country in week seven. It's very, very, very possible and easy to maintain that, as opposed to coming from 47 to trying to end up top seven by week 10. It's just, it's the nature of the beast. Now, again, typically, let's let's just paint a picture. You're nine and one, 10 and no, that type of thing. You're likely going to be sniffing in the, in at least in the woods of, of top 10, right? For sure. But it doesn't change the fact that if you start 10, you're going to be a two pretty quick. So it does matter. So let's let's go back to this. Uh, number one, of course, Georgia. Fair. Got it. Okay, cool. Michigan. I see a lot of stuff. Uh, and you know what? I give some credentials here. I think it, it's a good look for TCU, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But number two, Michigan. All right, with that. Ohio State. CJ Stroud's gone, you know, but uh, they are Ohio State. I am a firm believer in Jim Knowles. I think a lot of you guys are out there, out there as well. So, okay, fine. I can buy a Penn State at four. They better be, but I don't I don't think so. I don't think so. They're going to trip and fall a, a few times, a couple times too many at least. Washington at five? No, I'm sorry. Okay, that's, that's cool. You're in the pack, so you're going to have a shot. This is kind of what I'm talking about. I don't think Washington should be sniffing the top five, top ten at the end of the season. But because they're in the Pac-12, they're going to have some allotted things given their way that will keep them in the hunt there. Scheduling does matter. Where you start off the season in the rankings, to some degree, kind of do matter, right? Alabama at six. This is interesting. It is. No matter what anybody says, nobody thought for a long time there, right, that Saban was beatable. Well, he wasn't gettable. It wasn't going to happen. And Georgia just a little short, a little short, just like Georgia was mad at Mark Rick, just being a little bit too short, a little too short, a little too short. Same thing. Until it wasn't. Until they knocked down the door. Then it was different. Of course, you can go back to the Joe Burrow year, LSU, hats off, 100%. But for the most part, they were the giant that everyone was trying to slay, but you knew it was going to be almost impossible all the time. So to even consider them being outside of the top five, it is crazy. It is wild. But if they're in a quote-unquote rebuild, this is the time. Uh, he has Florida State at seven. I just, other than the schedule and stuff, I don't I don't see it. I don't, I don't get it. LSU, eight, yeah, okay, I can buy that. Notre Dame, nine. Yeah, cool. I can buy that. I, I actually am uh, a pretty pretty big believer in what Marcus Freeman has going there. Um, I know there's some disgruntlement at, at times from some people, but I think he's going to put it together. So I'm okay there. Uh, Clemson, 10, of course. It's Dabo. They've got some things going in their favor, e- even without DJ, you, the lung, the lele. <laughs> oh, okay, say that 10 times fast. Um, all right, I'm all right with it. Oregon, 11. I, Bo Nix, I like you. I like you a lot, Bo Nix. 
but I can't just do. I I I can't do it. I actually, I got to do more research because I just hate Oregon. So naturally, I want to be like, yeah, no chance in hell. They're not going to be at eleven. They suck. Blah 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 blah. I'll do a little bit more in Oregon. I'm not going to lie. It is what it is. But for now, like Bo Nix, hate Oregon. You are going to suck. You should definitely be behind number twelve, which is K State. <laughs> That's what, one of the first things I want to point out. Look at the top 10. <laughs> Without OU in Texas, come on now. Big 12 is going to have to re-earn some of this respect here. It is what it is. We've got to start turning the tide this season. TCU getting there, cool. TCU getting curb stomped, didn't make anybody look good. That's on us. So in order to get this preseason style of respect, we are going to have to start knocking down these doors. He's got uh, USC 13 schedule, Lincoln offense, a lot of transfers. Mason Cobb's there. I'll give him props. I can fall. I can see him here. Again, starting the season 13, it's going to afford them the ability to lose one pretty early on and still be able to survive. Utah 14, I can buy it. Don't like it, but I can buy it. Oregon 15, um, I don't know. We'll see what DJ can do with a fresh start. I like the colors, I like the confidence of some of their fan base. To some degree, they're a little, little wild, but maybe this is why the preseason style of stuff has got their heads so full. But again, it's the back mountain 7.5 West starting in the top 15. If, if they end up doing that, good for them. It's going to help. Tennessee 16. I'm a believer in Hypo. I'm okay with that. Texas 17. <laughs> again, they should be able to earn a little bit, a little bit of something, something, maybe something before this crap fest starts to happen. But y'all know, unfortunately, I do buy Texas this year. They're going to be pretty good. Not back, but pretty daggone good. So I'll give them that. Not, not 17, but they maybe should be in here. Mac Brown, right? They should be. He should be ahead of Texas here. He's earned it. He's deserved it at Texas and North Carolina. Put Mac Brown above him. It's ridiculous. 19, Wisconsin. They've got skill. They've got talent. they got returns. they got Luke Fickle. they got a pretty good staff put together. Okay, fine. I'll give some props there. 20, South Carolina. Y'all really think Spencer Rattler is going to be that guy? I do like the coach, obviously. I like local dudes, local flavor, oaky flavor. But uh, I just I can't, I, can't, I can't put stock in Spencer Rattler, y'all, as a human being. Football player, cool. Attitude, nah, can't do it. 21, Chip Kelly, UCLA, fine, cool. 22, TCU, that's disrespectful. Everyone thinks they're going to fall by the wayside. They're going to have a big, sweetheart, Cinderella, terrible type of season. Don't get it. Don't see it. Don't buy it. I think it's preposterous. But whatever, TCU, this is way too low. Ole Miss 23, yes, I agree. Because whether it be Jackson Dart, Spencer Sanders, I know there's some some stuff going around injury-wise. But I think Ole Miss is in good hands regardless, so I think I, I'm okay with this here. Tulane at 24, yes, I can buy it. They're going to be pretty doggone good. Uh, their improvements have been pretty pretty drastic lately. And then, of course, he's got to throw the uh, the old boomer OU squad 25. I don't know. I know we're not on there. I don't get it. Why do people think Gundy's just going to completely pa-pa-pow? And blow everything up and fall apart. It's crazy. I don't get it. Let me know down in the comments section. Y'all can maybe explain this to me. Tell me what I got right, what I got wrong. Like it if you like it. Don't or dislike it if you don't like it. Tell me why you didn't like it. Make sure you hit the subscribe. Make sure you share the daggone thing. I, I love what we got rolling here. I love this recruiting class. And the numbers will get better. You just got to wait on the, some of the production side of things. All right. So we're going to have for this one, as always, you know I love you. God bless. Go Pokes. And until next time, thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. All right, y'all.